speak to the Jewish people. Um, and you should say to them, when you come into the land, which I give you, you will harvest the harvest. You should bring the Omer, which is the first of your harvest, to the Kohen. Okay. And then what should you do? This is where the idea of the Omer comes from. The Omer is actually a measurement. It's a volume measurement. And there was barley, which they would harvest. And they would take a measurement of this barley and they would offer it as a carbon on the second day of these. And that's the concept of the Omer. A few Pesukim later, the Torah then says, Ushartem lachem, mimacharas ha-shabbat. You should count for yourself from the day after Shabbos. Miyom havi achem es Omer ha From the day on which you bring this Omer, which is going to be waived in the Beis HaMikra. You are to count seven complete until until the day or until the, the, the end of the seventh week, which would be a total of 49 days, but the 50th day, right? The 50th day is Shavuot. And on that day, you bring a special carbon which you bring. So a few things to note about the mitzvah of Sfiras Omer from the one thing to point out is, is that it's very striking that the Torah refers to Pesach here. It says you will start counting Sfiras Omer when? On the day after Shabbos, right? It's not Shabbos, it's the day after the first day. It's calling Pesach, the first day of Pesach, it's calling Shabbos. That's very striking. There's something very strange about that. Just say from the day after Pesach, not the day after Shabbos. In fact, it's so glaring that it does that, that there is a famous uh, dispute between the Tzedukim and the, the other Jews. The Tzedukim were a sect of Jews um, in the times of the Beis Amigdash who did not believe in Torah, Shabbat, okay? Um, so they took everything literally. So they said the following thing. They said, well, it says, you should start counting from the day after Shabbos. Okay, when does Sri Omer begin? Sri Omer begins on the Sunday, the day after Shabbos, the Sunday after Pesach, that's when it begins. Whenever Pesach is over, then you go wait till Shabbos. And then the Sunday after that, the next day, that's when you start counting Sfiyas Omer, because it's literally the day after Shabbos. And we, Chazal, understood, Umar explains how they got this. Chazal understood that the day after Shabbos means the day after the first day of Pesach. Which parenthetically, by the way, just, just to go back to that, that again, underlines that, that concept of Pesach being Connected, right? Because according to the Tzedukim, Pesach is nothing to do with Shavuot. Pesach is Independence Day. Shavuot is uh, celebrate the Torah day. So we can start counting Omer, but it doesn't mean we can start counting the day, the Sunday after Pesach. It doesn't matter. But for us, it, it has to be connected to, to Pesach. So you see that's but what I wanted to point out from here is, so the question begs, why, why is it that we call Pesach in this context? There must be some quality of Pesach that is similar to Shabbat. Some way that the Torah is calling it. That's what seems to be going on here. And the question is, what, what is that quality? That quality will help us understand another thing about Sri This idea is not on the sheet, but it's from the Meshach Chachma. Chachma says something very interesting. He says, what is the difference between Shabbos and Mincha? There are a few differences. One difference is, he says, that Shabbos preceded the Jewish people. Shabbos was there from six days of creation. And Yantif is an experience which only exists because of the experiences of the Jewish people. There's only a Pesach because we went out of Mitzrayim. There's only a Shavuos because we got the Torah. There's, right, I mean, we kind of spoke about this last time that the truth is probably the other way around, right? Meaning we got the Torah because there's something inherent about Shavuos. Okay, but, but the point is that the Yom and Kovim are connected to Kali Yisrael. We see this in the Kiddush that we make on Yantif. Shabbos, the concluding bracha of Kiddush is Baruch Atah Hashem, Mekadesh HaShabbos. That's the bracha, Mekadesh HaShem, Hashem, made Shabbos. On Yantif we say, Mekadesh Yisrael, Hazman. Hashem made the Jewish people holy, the Hazeman and the Jews made the time holy. How did we make the time so holy? Because in the times of the Beis Amikdash, the calendar was dependent 
on the Jewish people coming to the basin and saying that they saw the new moon and then the basin would make the new month. And then following that, you would have the Yom Tov fall in place. So the Yom Tov really, first of all, are there because of experiences which happened to us. And number two, the date of the Yom Tov is literally, it's all dependent on us, it's on the Jews. So it's Mekadesh Yisrael, Hashem sanctifies us, and we sanctify them as man. we sanctify this man. This is independent of the Jews. Mekadesh So it's interesting, he says, by the way, he suggests, this might be the reason why, especially for the women here, know that one of the main differences between them and Shabbos is the Yom Tov. So the Meshach Chochmah says, Perhaps the explanation of that is, is because Yamtif is only there, so to speak, because of us. So Yamtif bends to our needs, and we can do malacha for Ocham Efesh. Shabbos is independent of Jewish people, so Shabbos doesn't budge for us. Yamtif bends for us, Shabbos doesn't. So he says, Shabbos is the Gemara says, Shabbos is a, we tell us to our kids, a special friend. The Gemara says that. Shabbos is, right, it's Matana Tova Mishu. It's the, it's the special present I have that I give to the Jewish people. And then Shechachman says, why? Because what's a gift? A gift is something I don't deserve. There, 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 there's nothing necessarily that I've done to deserve that. It's just been handed to me. Shabbos is like that. Because there's nothing that really Shabbos should be applicable to all of humanity. It was when Hashem rested. Like the Jewish people. It became later on, Shabbos is something uniquely Jewish, right? To the extent that really non Jews are not allowed to keep Shabbos. But the truth is, really, it, there's nothing Jewish about Shabbos itself, right? It's nothing to do with the Jewish experience, as opposed to Yantif. Shabbos is a matana, it's a gift, because we didn't do anything to deserve the Shabbos. So then he develops this further and he says, if I were to look at the three until the Pesach, Shavuot, which of those Yom and Tovim is most similar to Shabbos in the sense of this aspect of we didn't deserve Jewish people? Well, Shavuos, we spent time a week before, it says in the Mikvah, they washed their clothes, they're getting ready, they're preparing emotionally, and you know, the Kedush of the for the giving of the Tovim. On Sukkot, we did the Teshuva following the Hino and the clouds of glory, the Hanami Akkad of return. Pesach, as I'll say, we were in a pretty lousy state in Mitzrayim, right? We were on the 49th level of Tumah, and uh, we didn't deserve to be taken out. Really, we were so drenched into the Egyptian culture and society. And it's true, Hashem gave us mitzvos, Arban Pesach and things like that to, to help us have something. But but it really was, it was it was a freedom. Hashem said, you don't really deserve it, but I'm taking you out anyway, right? Which is why Pesach, it is a concept that it, it is parallel, it, it represents the concept of chesed, of pure kindness. So the Yom Tif, which shares the quality of Matnas Chinam, of being given to us, even though we didn't deserve it, is Pesach. Pesach is that Yom Tif. So Pesach shares that with Shabbos. Now, the next thing we would want to find out then is why is it that indeed we mentioned before, we don't count Sphira in the first night of We only start Mimacharas. It's the day afterwards. So why is it the day afterwards? Why are we not starting to count on the Baal Shemto gives a mashal to it. First part is not a mashal. First part is he says, why is it that you look around and you see sometimes people who are new the Yiddish guy and um, it's so enjoyable. They're they're flying by, right? And they're they're riding cloud nine, it's it's all. And people who have been Jewish for a long time, um, it starts to become stale after a while. It's not so exciting, right? So a person becomes uh, becomes either they become Jewish or they become more religious, and they decide they're going to keep Shabbos. And all of a sudden, Shabbos is like the greatest thing, right? And then uh, you know we've been keeping Shabbos 30, 40, 50, 60 years, whatever it is, and you know Shabbos kind of uh, starts to get stale. What's going on? So he says it's really a martial If you look at a child. So when we've seen our children begin to walk, okay, at eight, one, 18 months, whatever it is. So what happens? He stands up and the parents hold on, hold on to the child. And the child's walking along, the parents holding the arm, walking along. 
rate. And this happens day after day, and the parents eventually decide that it's okay. They have enough confidence the child can do it on their own. And what happens? The parent lets go, and the child falls. Right now, if the child could express itself, right, the child would say, like, what's going on here? I, it's been working fine. It's, it's, it, it's, you know, it's just smooth, smooth sailing for the last week. And now I can't even, I can't even, I can't go a step without falling. So what's happening? Yeah, when it gets difficult, it's difficult because the parent is letting go. And the parent is now saying, what the, I didn't use that. But now you can do this. And that's why you're falling. That's why it's difficult because I'm here. I'm not holding on to you, but I'm here. Vashanta says, Pesach with the idea of the Meshachach. First day of Pesach is what? Shem Hashem. Hashem gives it to us. Hashem is there. He gives it. He gives us the spiritual, spiritual energy, so to speak, that we didn't really deserve. Okay? That's why it shares the quality of Shabbos. Once that's over, second day, but at that point, Hashem lets go. Hashem says, I got you out of time. I gave that to you. Now let me see you work a little bit. And now it's going to be different. That's 49 steps where we start about growth and becoming better and working towards a goal. That's when Hashem will go. Interesting because, you know, the, there are 12, um, there are 12 mazelos, logical signs. And they each correspond to one of the um, Jewish. And usually, um, the, the quality of the mazel has something to do with the mazel. So if you look at the mazel of Nisan, okay? You have to know what the mazel of Nisan is. Okay? It probably has something to do with the sheep in Mitzrayim. There's definitely a connection. But it's the sheep. By nature, then it's an animal which follows the shepherd, right? The shepherd goes, the shepherd is running the show. Hashem is holding on to the sheep, right? The sheep just goes and follows. The um, mazel for our month here is what? Is the shore. And what is the ox? Ox is the beast of burden and work, heavy lifting, right? So we begin. Sphiras Omer on the day after Pesach, the day after the first day of Pesach, when Hashem lets go, so to speak, and now there's a process of, of growth. And that is obviously going to come. That's when you have to pull up your, your sleeves and really get and get work. The second idea is that that real growth and true growth, you know, when we're feeling those difficult times, you know, and you want to give up, that's actually Hashem saying, here's where I really think you can do it. Now, now is where I have the confidence in you. Before it was easy, that's because I was holding on, but now I'm not holding on. I'm not holding on because I think you can you can do this on your own because I believe in you. Those are two ideas. Um, we'll try to get into more. Now, um, okay. So the um, all right, the third thing. Um, take a look at the, the Sefer Achinoch in number three. Sefer Achinoch is a book, um, fascinating Sefer. Um, we don't exactly even know who the author was. It was probably written I think, around the 12th, 1300s. Um, and the, the Sefer Chinuch is a book about all of the mitzvahs of the Torah. Okay, so he goes through mitzvah by mitzvah, and he says he wrote it so people could read it on Shabbos afternoon if they bored. Okay, they didn't have anything to do, they could read the Sefer. That's what he says. So, how about it? We should do that, right? So, he says that uh, he outlines every one of the 630 mitzvahs, and he talks about just in basic form what is the message of the mitzvah, and so on and so forth. So, he says the following idea. Okay, we've dealt with essentially, we've dealt with the concept of, um, why Pesach is called Shabbos, why we're only starting to count on the second day, not the first day. Um, we haven't talked about what exactly is like the meaning behind the mitzvah. So I'm going to want to offer, I want to offer to you two ideas and then that will close. One more well-known and one less I think, well-known. So the more well-known is the Sefer HaChinuch. And the Sefer HaChinuch number three explains what is the concept of, the, of having a mitzvah where we count. We don't do anything. We don't need anything. We don't, do, oh, we just say something. That's it. We just count. What's the concept of it? He says, and if they came because of this, he, he called Ikaran Shal Yisrael, Ba'avura Nigalu. Because the Torah is at the center of all Jewish people, Ba'avura Nigalu. And because of it, we were redeemed. There's that concept again. It's for the Torah that we were redeemed. Nitztavinu Limnos Mimachras Yom Tov Shal Pesach. 
have been commanded to count from the day after the first day of Pesach, ad yom nesinas Torah, until the day of the giving of the Torah. Why? Leharos benavshenu achefetz hagadol el hayom hanichbod. To show and display our great desire for this awesome great day. Anichsaf lulibenu keeved yishach tzel. Like a servant who anxiously awaits the shade that he will be led for. And he's always, he's counting and looking forward to it with great um, excitement. When will that day come that I will be freed? Because counting um, um, demonstrates to us that my entire desire and want is to reach on time beyond that. So this is the famous idea that we're counting towards Kabbalah Satan. Okay? There's a famous question which the, the Sefer Achim asks, why then do we count up? We count down, right? He says that himself, because every time you want something, you're always counting down, right? There's 30 more days till school, 29, right? 28. So why are we counting up and not down? And he gives a certain answer. Um, but a, a different answer that I'd like to su suggest, which, which is brought down, is that when we count down towards something, like, this, like say for Achinov says, we're counting with excitement towards reaching something. We count down means I have no value in what's going on now, but that is, that is important, right? So I'm counting down until the days of my wedding, right? So there's 10 days left to my wedding. Say I can't stand being single. It's not enjoyable. My whole life, I just want to be married. So that's going to be real life. This is just nothing. Just, if I could, I, I'd skip this now. I'd just go right to this. I count down. So there's an idea that with counting, essentially one of the things we are demonstrating is we are counting towards the day of the giving of the Torah. But what we are doing is we are demonstrating that we value the process to get there. We're not just focused on the end result, and that's it. So I'm count that would be counting down. This has no value, but that does. Counting up means I'm excited, like the Sefer Achim says, excited towards something. But while the end result is what I'm, I'm very excited to get to, and I cherish the process that it takes to get to. So that's the third idea, perhaps, in growth, that we're thinking about growth, but, we, you know, and it's important to have our eye on the prize, so to speak. Um, but at the same time, um, we also have to value the time that we have now because the moment there is important. Okay, the last idea comes from um, Rev Hirsch. Rev Hirsch says the following thing. If you look, it's interesting. We're all told since we're kids, based on Sefer Achim, we count Sefer Omer to get the, the day of the Torah. If you look at the Pasuk, um, there's something in the Pasuk which, which seems to present that as a problem. Hashem tells Moshe, when will the mitzvah of Sefir Omer begin? Speak to the Jewish people and say to them, when does the mitzvah of Sefir begin? It begins, sorry, in source one, I apologize, in, in number one, right, the second Pasuk. It begins, when you arrive in Israel. So it always struck me because if we're counting to get to the Torah, it should have been counting since the day they got out of its right. But this seems like a mitzvah which was not given to them where they were in the desert. It was a mitzvah that would apply when they get to Eretz Yisrael. That's when the mitzvah is. So how do we reconcile that with counting towards Kabbalah Satora? Because it seems to be not related to that. I think on a simple level, the Sefer HaChinuch is just saying, each year, like we spoke about last month, each year we are reliving Kabbalah. Right? So the first year, for whatever reason, we'll explain why in a moment, they didn't count that. But after that, we are counting towards Kabbalah. We're not really reenacting what we did the first year, because we didn't do it the first year. We are counting towards what? Towards Kabbalah Satora, because Kabbalah Satora happens in a certain way every year on Shavuot. Not just like an anniversary, it actually happened, and we count towards that. So what is this idea that the mitzvah only applies once you get into Israel? So Rav Hirsch says in the bottom, he says this idea. Um, 
with rehearse sometimes the English is even harder than the Hebrew. Okay, so I'll read it and I'll just tell you what I think it means. Rehearse says, after the Shabbat, when you have not only celebrated the festival of having taken freedom, but you have also brought to your mind before Hashem the fact of your independence gained by possession and enjoyment of one's own land, so that you are conscious of both of those possessions, meaning I have the land of Israel, as Kisavo Lelaretz, I've come to the land of Israel, and what else do I have now? Besides being free, and I have the land, I brought this carbon, the carbon omer, which is a carbon of what? Of my crops. So what do I have? Everything. I have freedom. I have my own country. And I'm prosperous. Freedom and prosperity, which in general are the aims which all national desires and all national efforts are directed to attain. Everyone looking to have right? freedom and living a good life. Then, only once that happens, the verse says, then you as Jews are to consider yourself not at the goal, but at the beginning of your national destiny. And only then do you begin to count for the acquisition of the other goal. And I think what well, the last line he says. Where others leave off their counting, you begin yours. Where other people believe that they have reached the summit and the pinnacle, which is freedom and wealth, right? And, agri and, and they have everything. So if her says, that's when we start counting. Counting, if her explains, the idea is when I'm counting towards something, I'm not there yet. If her says, it's bidavka after you come into the land. Bidavka, after you go through an emotional experience of, hey, I'm free from Egypt, I'm not slaves anymore. But they were free from Mitzrayim. But when they were in the desert, they were wandering around. Right? Half the time, they were yelling at Go back to Mitzrayim, you're taking a seat by. It wasn't a great sight. So, right? Once they get into the land, not only are they free, they're free, and now they have their own country. And then what happens? You bring this carbon, which only happens after you reap the produce, which means, wow, things are going really well for me. And her first says, even though things are going really well, the message of Sphira Omer to her first is that, you know, our growth has to be directed where? It has to be directed toward. And even though we've attained a certain level of, you know, um, uh, completion, success in that area, like her first says, we, we really are just beginning. That's not really how we measure those are the four ideas. I'll leave you with number one: that freedom without the Torah is not really a true freedom. That uh, when it's difficult, growth is going to be difficult. And that's in the time when Hashem is saying, "I knew confidence that you can grow." And um, number three: the idea that we count towards something because in growth we value the process as well, not just the process. And then number four from Rupert that all of our group has to really be focused towards ultimately other people also important to help us, but ultimately